Hello, and welcome to the Langton. Apologies that this is a virtual open evening like everything else this year, but we are where we are, and you'll be able to watch us over and over again to your heart's delight. Schools should have personalities. The tragedy for me is that too many of them don't. This is a school with a big personality. Sometimes when I talk to other head teachers and ask them what their school is like, they will come back with an answer like 67% A star to C at GCSE, which is really a fairly hopeless way of describing a school. If you measure the performance of schools or individual students purely and simply in terms of the educational outcomes they achieve, you're either a fool, an idiot, or a government minister. The first two I can probably forgive, the latter I probably can't. Our metric of success is quite simple. We measure our success in terms of the destinations that our young people are able to, to get to once they leave here. In terms of Oxford, Cambridge, top 20 universities, we punch way above our weight in Kent and are the most highly successful performing school in the city. But that's not really what education is about. Our philosophy of education is really about working with parents to help our students become the best version of themselves that they can be in order that they can make a strong contribution to future society. But that's not so very difficult, is it? I'll give you a secret. I do know what education is about. And I know what it's about because it's what we've been doing since we lived in caves. We've been doing it forever. Education is really simple. If you're ready for the answer, it's older people helping younger people become older people. That's it. That's the most important thing we can do for the next generation. You'll notice that when I talk about uh, the young people at this school, I use the word students. And this really is from Aristotle. It's a simple but complex notion that a student is he who learns. A pupil is he who is taught. There's a subtle but a massive distinction between those two. And it's one of the ways that we demonstrate our passion for deep learning and true learning at the Langton. One of the things I think which is really interesting, and hopefully at some point you can come to the school and have a look and experience it for yourself, is the fact that I do spend quite a bit of time in other schools. And the thing that makes the Langton unique is that almost every other school I see a kind of silent war of attrition between teachers and students. It's not open warfare, but it's just there, and they both recognise each other as the enemy. At the Langton, teachers and students are facing in the same direction. They're on the same side. There's a great feeling of respect between the two, which develops into you know, a deeper learning friendship later on uh, in the sixth form years. I think at this stage, it's probably a good idea for us just to go and have a look around so that you get a bit of a sense of this school. Education at the Langton is not passive and reactive. Uh, it's exciting, and we hope that our classrooms exhibit high-octane lessons most of the day. Schools are about, ultimately, teaching and learning. Every year, I watch every teacher teach lessons, and I walk the school every day. I know what's going on, and I know what the strengths of the school are. Ironically, we have more teachers with the title of doctor or professor than any other state school in the country. It doesn't mean they can teach, but it does mean they are subject specialists. I watched the lesson recently, it was part of a colleague's interview process in another school and I observed the lesson with a senior member of staff and at the end of it we talked about the strengths and weaknesses and what we'd seen was a teacher asking a lot of boys a lot of questions and the boys were putting their hands up, they were answering the questions, they were really excited and at the end the colleague said to me, wasn't that a brilliant lesson, loads of boys answering loads of questions and I said, what's the point asking boys questions if they know the answer? Surely we should be asking them questions to which they don't know the answer. And I think that interesting approach to education characterises an awful lot of what we are doing here. Because learning is not confined to classrooms. We have a research programme that is the envy of England. And it comes from a visit to the school by a, a former student, a former head boy, uh, who had the enviable title of Creative Lead for Google. And he came over and he described how he felt Langton education had contributed to his career at Google. And he told me that the most exciting thing about his job 
was that for 20% of his time, he could work with other colleagues, he could use any of Google's resources, and he could work on any task or project he wanted to, totally regardless of his targets, line management, etc., etc. And he said the reason Google do this is because 70% of new products come out of that 20% time. This idea struck me. So the next staff meeting, we talked to the staff, and I said, how about 20% of everything you do in the classroom is just beyond the syllabus. It's what you like doing, it's where your passion is. And of course, as with any workforce, a third of them took to the idea straight away, a third of them took against the idea straight away, and a third of them sat on the fence to see what was happened. But within two years, we got a satellite orbiting the Earth twice a day and feeding data back to CERN and NASA. We had a project in biology funded to the tune of a million pounds by the Wellcome Foundation, looking at the degeneration of the myelin basic sheath in the first stages of multiple sclerosis. And we managed somehow to become the architects of a philosophy of education which was based on research of teachers and students walking side by side in search of answers that neither of them currently possessed. I think that education in most schools around the country is learning what everybody has always learned before. At the Langton, the exciting thing is actually learning things that nobody has learned before. Now, we're in the school's star centre at the moment, which is the home of science research. And the science research at this school was praised by the former Vice-Chancellor of Cambridge University when he came down to open this building. And he said, the brilliance of Simon Langton School is to take a flavour of the excitement I experienced and continue to experience every day in university life, the thrill and the excitement of knowing what nobody has ever known before and bringing it into the classroom. And that's the Vice-Chancellor of Cambridge, a very clever man. With our research programme, in order for it to work properly, we do have a separate programme running as part of our curriculum, which again is unique to the Langton, and that's our History of Ideas programme. When I was at school, I remember a group of chaps came into assembly one day and gave me a little red book, and it was a Bible, and they were the Gideons, and they said, you can have this book for nothing as long as you read a chapter of it every day of your life, which, of course, I didn't. Uh, we don't have the Gideons. We do have Gombrich's Little History of the World, and we use that in, the, in Year 7 as the basis of our curriculum where we teach the students the timeline of human existence, which I think is the core of any particular curriculum. And while we're talking about academic subjects, let's think for a moment about the arts. Since austerity hit in, say, 2008, we know that school curriculum budgets have been constrained hugely. And we know that colleagues in other schools have stripped back music, drama and the arts, which is something we will never do here. I believe very passionately that once you've lost the arts in your school, your school has lost its soul. Take a look at this. Fantastic stuff. This is brilliant. We also do research in the arts. We've probably got one of the best music departments in the country, and they're working with the local choir of Parkinson's sufferers, looking at whether participation in music actually slows down the degenerative process. Fascinating stuff. Resilience is one of the things we're most keen to develop in the young men in our charge, really because we think it's the most necessary attribute for successful adult life. And we know that occasionally the wheels will come off. Uh, one of the things I'm most proud of in this school is the quality of pastoral care. And so every year group has their own head of year. And in year seven, you have your very own Mrs. Shepherd, uh, who's not a member of the teaching staff. She's one of the finest heads of year seven in the country. And she has the time to be able to work with you and with your parents to iron out any problems as and when they arrive. And we know that pastoral care works at its best when it's teachers, parents and students all working together to resolve life's little problems. Resilience can come in many other ways. We've got a fantastic sporting reputation. We also run an enormous array of school trips as far afield as China, uh, to America, frequently to places in Europe. It's interesting that a number of years ago I was invited uh, to go to China to advise the Chinese government on how to teach creativity in school. And I'd been in China for less than three hours when I realized that every fourth person on the planet 
25% of the human race spoke Mandarin and we didn't even offer it as a, a subject at school. Mandarin is very much part of our offer now. Uh, it's an exciting subject. It's lovely to go in and watch the Mandarin lessons. Uh, and it, it gives us a contemporary feel. We are an old school with traditions. If you visited the school, you will notice that some of our buildings are a little bit frayed. One of the things I've been particularly heartened with this year is that KCC have announced a £5 million building project at the school, which will give us 16 new classrooms to replace mostly those tired old mobiles. And we're always on the lookout for, for money. We're always on the lookout to develop our offer and make better what it is that we've got. And I'm sitting here in the Tong Centre, which is a gift from a benefactor of the school, another former student who went to work at Google. And Simon Tong contacted me a number of years ago and he said, look, I want to make a charitable donation to an organisation. And the Langton is one of the organisations I will consider alongside Oxford University and MIT. So that left me thinking, fine, OK, we're the, we're the small fish, we're the minnows here, we're probably not going to get anything. But I wrote out our philosophy of research education, sent it to Simon in Silicon Valley, and within two weeks he wrote back and said, here's a million dollars, go and build your research centre, which is a wonderful story, and here we are. The irony of this story, of course, is that a million dollars doesn't quite build you a research centre. And every contractor we went to said, oh, you've almost got enough money, but not quite. Well, every cloud has a silver lining. And so Brexit happened, and overnight, our million dollars was worth about £47,000 more than it had been previously, and was enough to, to get the building work going, which is lovely. Um, I think... In conclusion, boys, you know it's going to be tough trying to be the best version of yourself that you can be. You know it's going to be a challenge, but challenges are worth rising to. Often when I find myself talking to Year 7 parents on a sports pitch or the side of a, a, a fixture at the weekend, and I'll talk to them about what's the experience of your boy in the first six weeks of the school, and the answer is always the same. He is exhausted. And this one dad last year said to me, you know, my son said to me nine words in a sentence last Friday night that I've never heard before. I think I'll take myself up to bed now. The end product of a Langton education is a caring, confident, well-rounded, inquisitive young man ready to take his place in his generation, in his society. But more than that, we think that with resilience, with the ability to research, with the kindness that we demonstrate every day here at this school, Langtonians are perfectly capable, perfectly willing and perfectly able to be the good brothers, the good husbands and the good fathers that we also expect them to be.